Here's our number one game of 2023, and nobody's talking about it. 2023 has been an awesome year for board games, with instant classics coming out for practically every type of gamer. So here's our top five. Number five. If you've played Pandemic and thought it needs more dungeon crawler, then Tales to Amaze is the game for you. <laughs> It is a cooperative variant of a very popular series that gives an entirely new angle to Unmatched. The box contains four new characters that are all cross-compatible with the existing competitive format and the biggest double-sided Unmatched board to date, allowing up to four players to battle it out. But the twist here is that instead of fighting each other, you're all working together to defeat the evil villain of which there are two in the box. If you already know Unmatched, then this will be a really quick and easy game to pick up and get playing. The gameplay is exactly the same for all characters with the addition of the villain's turn that is automated via their own deck of cards. And just to make it more interesting, the bad guy is also accompanied by a set of minions with their own set of decks. The turn order is randomized via an initiative deck similar to the one in one of my personal favorite games, Aeon's End. You shuffle the deck and follow the turns, very simple. As the threat level increases, the villains get closer to achieving their goal of total destruction or maybe they and their minions will kill you first. And if it's getting too easy for you, then add in some more restrictions by randomly selecting a few event cards when setting up. Aim of the game is to destroy the villain before they destroy you and your world. Unmatched, Tales to Amaze will introduce a whole new crowd to this franchise. If competing with your friends was not quite your thing, then potentially working together to solve this puzzle might just be. I personally love the Unmatched system, but found that our player group wasn't a big fan of skirmish style games. But that same group really enjoyed this. And the best thing is everything is cross compatible with what you already have available. You can use all your characters you may already have to play the co-op game and vice versa. Tesla, in my opinion, is an absolute standout character from the box. Also, I can't wait to do some crazy matchups in a cooperative scenario like Dracula vs. Alien. Absolutely amazing. This might just be the best version of Unmatched to date. Absolutely two thumbs up from me. Yeah, I totally agree with you there, so I'd have to give this two thumbs up as well. Um, our last game when we played this Tesla, he, he's just so much fun to play. He's got this awesome mechanic with the two, two cores you're trying to discharge. Super fun. And he's going to be my go-to character from here on. Absolutely. On to the next game. Number four. Who would have thought landing a plane would be so difficult? Work together in perfect harmony with your co-pilot as a well-oiled unit to ground a commercial aeroplane. Sky Team is a beautifully simple two-player only cooperative game where you chuck dice, flick switches and move along tracks. The board represents different controls such as landing gears, flaps, brakes and speed, all of which have to be activated before touching down, but with the added quirk of not being able to discuss your dice rolls. The small size box is filled to the brim with scenarios landing at different airports across the world, each with ramping difficulty. Done so by introducing new mechanics such as the management of fuel and the introduction of turbulent conditions. What this does so well is recreating that tension of a 1970s disaster movie with you and your co-pilot trying to read each other's mind and synchronize perfectly. The game is incredibly original how it ensures it's a truly cooperative experience, right? No one person is going to make all the decisions. It really has to be a collaboration between both players. Yeah, I mean, I, I know what that's like when you have an alpha gamer in your group. I don't know what you're talking about, Todd. <laughs> Let's get on to the next one. Number three. Join forces with your friends and family as you attempt to stop the White Hand from stealing priceless works of art from around the globe. You and your crack team of agents plan and move across the map trying to remove and prevent the dangers imposed by the glove-wearing crate pinchers by speaking cryptically to each other and through overemphasis of facial movements. The game is actually really easy to just pick up and play. In a nutshell, all you're really doing, play a card, move on the map, fight bad guys. First, the mission where you draw two cards and play one. This can get very interesting as there are usually costs involved with playing the cards that will be deducted from your team's shared resources or your own health. These resources you will also gain from the same action of playing said card, but be careful 
as you can't speak to each other about specific details presented to you on your card of choice. This encourages talking less about numbers and gives you the ability to roleplay your actions instead, helping elevate the gaming experience, forcing creative thinking and world building. Secondly, the movement, where you and your team decide where on the map you will need to be, working together on where there is a threat that needs eradicating or where there may be a known trait of art that needs recovering. Finally, the fight, where you roll dice and hope to have a bigger number than the total strength of the enemy. With multiple options of mitigation, guns can be traded for allies or discarded to increase your strength, clues can be lost for the chance to re-roll. The game is absolutely stunning and brought to life in typical Vincent Dutre fashion. From the double-sided maps, cards and even the player aids. So going from Sky Team's disaster movie theme uh, to art projects, heist movie vibes, I absolutely love this one. Yeah, as soon as I heard about this, I was like, Saab, we have to play this. It's the pandemic vibes of it, the cooperative experience, it all ticks all the boxes for me. How dare you play this without me? I did play it without him. Number two. Now I am the ancient knowledge, lost texts of time, gone and forgotten. Unless you can save the knowledge before it's all gone. Is that a Magic the Gathering playmat on your head? In ancient knowledge, rule over your own ancient civilization, building structures and discovering artifacts which advance your knowledge. Ancient knowledge is a competitive engine builder for two to four players, and in each player's turn, you will have three phases. The first part is the action phase, where you choose two different actions or the same action twice. They are either playing a monument card or artifact card from hand, take a monument card from the face down pile, take a technology card, as long as you meet the requirements, if it has any, and finally the option to exhaust or tap a card in your pass to draw two cards. The second part of the game is the timeline phase, where all potential triggered effects happen on cards with the symbol. This is where you see the results of the structures you've built, where maybe you can stop knowledge from becoming lost and forgotten by history, or maybe it just lets you draw cards, and card draw is important in this game where the more options you have, the more effective you can build your civilization. And lastly is the decline phase, probably the most interesting element of the game and it really brings it to life. As time passes, the monuments you build will slowly start to crumble and dissolve away into the past. And if these monuments still have knowledge on them, that knowledge will be sent to the dreaded lost zone, being forgotten forever. More importantly, all that means is you will have minus one point for each one that you have in your Lost Zone, so make sure you don't have too many. This was so close to being my number one game of the year. The only thing that maybe held it back slightly was long player turns, especially when you have somebody with the old case of analysis paralysis. They might need a little bit of a push with a bit of a sad time. Where did you even get that from? You don't even have any pockets in your trousers. At two to three players, this is an absolute gem. The decline phase is what makes this stand out from the very crowded genre of engine builders though. Rather than building the most powerful engine by the end of the game, you have this ever evolving engine that flows throughout at points stronger and other points weaker, helping limit someone from running away with the game. But there are permanent parts of the engine that you can build on too, via the artifacts that sit in their permanent location and stay with you till the end of time, or the technology cards that will also have end game scores or some really powerful instant effects once learnt. The monument cards are the meat of the mechanics with a mix of instant effects when played, effects when the card is lost to the past, and making things happen in the timeline phase. But after a few plays, you quickly start to understand other viable options to victory that might not be so reliant on the monuments or even benefiting from knowledge being lost. It is such an adaptive game and it's one that just keeps calling me back to get it back on the table, play it again. I just, I just want to play more of this thing. And the amount of content you get in such a small box, absolutely amazing. I've been itching to play Ancient Knowledge since we, since we last played it. It is such a slick game such a nice engine building game and i kind of compare it a little bit to like wingspan in that sort of complexity and and mm. sort of how easy it is to get people into yeah. that sort of game what i think it kind of falls short in 
is that it's it's almost a little bit generic looking, right? There's, yeah. There's quite a lot of these Civ games in the market, and you really have to do something special mm. to really stand out. And I don't think the box art necessarily does that, but God, this game is really special. Yeah. It's so unique. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I mean, you're right. You've definitely got this engine builder Civ type thing going on, but it, it definitely gives me kind of vibes of you know like proper Civ builders like. Sid Meier's Civilization, Through the Ages, the board game, those kind of things. But it really, you know, just compacts things down. It's not a bear to get out onto the table to get components and the board ready. It's not a bear to get players around to even play a game like that with you. This is just boom, up and running and you're good to go. Definitely another two thumbs up from me. On to the next game. <laughs> Number one. Run away, don't look back. The police are right behind you. No, not you, sir. By renowned design house Fowers Games, of Burger Brothers fame, comes a game of cat and mouse unlike any others before it. One runner and one police dispatch helicopter, both hidden from each other, both with unique abilities and perks. The runner must collect various gadgets throughout the map and escape at safe house, all while keeping out of sight of the police dispatch. Take a tile off the runner board and place it on the evidence board for the dispatch to follow. Some moves are silent, so sit face down on the evidence board while sprinting or using gadgets reveals the tile face up on to the dispatch. Speaking of gadgets, every time the runner collects a gadget, they receive a powerful single-use item that helps them traverse the map in unexpected ways, helping them evade the grasp of the police. Run also includes a smart system to increase difficulty called the rank system. Play well in games and rank up, introducing new features and mechanics to the role you're playing. The first time feels like playing a tutorial, but a few games in and the intensity ramps up, keeping the game feeling fresh throughout. It also comes with a ton of maps, with totally different layouts and tools available to the players. Oh, and did I mention the unlockables? Get to rank 4 and open the secret research envelope, which unlocks an incredible- Uh, first, no spoilers. Oh, okay fine, I won't say, but rest assured, you won't be disappointed. Now I'm a huge fan of hidden movement games. The immersion of the chase, the puzzle of trying to figure out where your opponent is. But it always ends up being this really large endeavour to try and get it to the table. Some of the best times I've had playing games are in Spectre Ops or Mind Management. But it really can be a struggle to get to the table. After all of the excitement of finally getting hold of Fury of Dracula, we played it a whole one time. It's a great game, but it's complex, it's a tough teach, and usually requires a lot of players for that perfect experience. Yeah, Run really gives me that kind of fugitive vibe or, you know, I think even more closer to Catch Me If You Can. Um, you know, the, the whole 60s art, pop art style stuff going on. I just, yeah, it's, it's right up my street. Yeah, you should totally just watch an opening to uh, Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. And if this doesn't scream that, then I don't know what else does. Thankfully, this game delivers in every respect. It takes a new perspective on hidden movement games and it's easily one of the best of its kind. It feels like this game isn't getting the recognition it deserves. No one's talking about it, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's easily my favourite game of 2023. Bum, bum, bum. Our number one game of 2023, and nobody's talking about it. Hi, I'm Fez, and I'm the owner of Gathering Games. I hope you enjoyed our very first video for our brand new channel. Leave a comment below of any videos you'd like us to make. Give us a like and subscribe for more board game content. Click on the link in the description below to shop board games and all things tabletop games over at the Gathering Games website. To our existing community that comes back to us week after week to support us, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You guys rock. GG. On to the next game. <laughs> <laughs> and that's ancient knowledge for you. On to the next game. I said that's ancient knowledge. No, I said that's on to the next game. Take your time, man. What Sky Team does so well is recreating that tension of a 1970s disaster movie where you stare at your co-pilot intensely trying to think of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, 100%. 100 absolutely, yeah. Yes. I said nothing, but I took 30 seconds of your life. Absolutely, hmm? yes. I agree. I concur. <laughs>